plus the seven and we're solving the proportions. Proportions, ratios, all of that is written like fractions and that's why you need to know fractions. A lot of times you just have to make equivalent fractions to tell whether or not things are um, proportional or not or just solving the proportion. In the real world, in real world, you can use a recipe to make anything when you're cooking cookies, cakes, muffins, and even punch. A great party punch is made by mixing one gallon of fruit punch in eight ounces of frozen sherbet. Okay, this is when I would do a proportion. So if it's eight, if it's one gallon of, of fruit punch to eight ounces of frozen sherbet, it's like you would, let's say I need more than a gallon because I'm making it for all my classes. So then, I, and it'll tell me how many servings that might make. And then, so I have to double it or triple it to get as many servings as I need for all my students. Does that make sense? Uh, do you guys have your um, notes out? Make sure, I already told you guys to make sure you guys have your notes out. So these are some words that you really need to focus on when we're going to talk about this lesson when we're solving the um, proportion is cross product. It says the cross product of a proportion are equal. What that means is this. Remember when I say cross cancel, cross reduce, that means that's what we're doing. We're crossing it. We're making a big cross. So. B times C is equal to A times D. Now, I said B times C is equal to A times D, but they switched it around. Does it matter? No. You can do B, as long as you're making sure it's a cross product. It doesn't matter which one's on the left and which one's on the right. Does that make sense? Okay. And it says, then A over B is equal to C over D. If B does not equal zero and D does not equal zero, because you can't have zero in the denominators. That's all it's saying. You can never have zero in the denominator. So a proportion is an equation stating that two ratios or rates are equal. You can use the multiplication property of equality to illustrate an important property of proportion. The ratios four over two and eight over four are equal because they both simplify to two. So if you can simplify both of the fractions to equal each other, you don't have to do the cross product. Okay? Because if I can say, if I can just reduce this, four over two equals two and eight over four equals two, aren't they equal? Okay, sometimes it's not that easy though. That's when you do the cross product. And I'm gonna show it to you here. I'm gonna do the two times eight, which is 16. And then four times four is 16. Are they equivalent? Yes. That's how I want you to show your work. You could even done it like by showing me what that equals to as a fraction or then the cross product. Does that make sense? So it says the product four times four and eight times two. And A, D, and C, B are called cross products of the proportion. The cross products of any proportion are equal. Cross products will help when you use proportional reasoning to solve problems. Sometimes those fractions aren't easy. So that's when we want to use the cross multiplication. Just as in solving an equation, solving a proportion means finding the value of the variable that makes a true statement. You can use cross products to solve a proportion in which one of the quantities is not known. We've already kind of worked on this during our bell work, okay? When I give you letters, because when you guys do the is over of equals percent over 100, sometimes you're trying to figure out what that percent is, and I give you a letter there, that's the same thing. You're using the cross product. So this, I do 15 times 66, which is 990, equals 90 times B, which would be 90B. Can I have these flip-flopped around? Can I have 90B first equals 990? 
Yeah. Yep, I sure can. Like, it does not matter. But then how do I solve for B? Guys, how do I solve for B? Divide by 90. I'm going to divide both sides by 90. Right? So then, because these cancel each other out. So I have 990 divided by 90 would be... would be 11, correct? So then I just found out what B equals. B equals 11. Now, here's another way you can solve it without doing cross multiplication that sometimes I find is a little bit even easier. And you, you guys show that on your bell work today. You're making equivalent fractions, right? How do I get from 15 to 90? What do I multiply 15 by to get to 90? Six. Six? Because 15 plus 15 is 30. 30 plus 30 is 60. 60 plus another 30 is 90. So if I multiply 15 times 6 to go backwards, how do I get from 66 backwards? What, do I, what would I do? I'd have to divide by 6. So 66 divided by 6 is 11. You can do both ways as long as you're showing me either way that you do it. This is not given to you in this lesson. This way is not given to you in this lesson. They're only showing you cross products. But I'm telling you, if they're equal or proportions, you can solve it that way. Now, let's solve it finding equivalent fractions. How do I get from 9 to 36? What? So then what will I do with the top? You're not going to divide this time because I'm going in the same direction. The only reason why we divided here is because I started here and was going backwards. If you go backwards, you divide. If you go forward, you multiply. Does that make sense? So I'm still going forward, and that's why I always show you guys with my arrows. So I take 3.2 times 4. 4 times 2 is 8. 4 times 3 is 12. Add my decimal point. And so n equals 12.8. But I'm showing... Oops, yeah, my work. Okay? That's one example. The other way is to do the cross multiplication where I'm doing this. 36 times 3.2 equals 9n. Isn't this going to take me a little bit more work doing my multiplication than the other way? So... I would go whichever way is not going to take me as long. So I'd have to come over here and do 36 times 3.2, which is at the end 115.2, equals 9n. And then I'm going to divide by 9 on both sides. These cancel each other out. And then you still get the 12.8. Two ways to solve. Now, sometimes, though, it's not as easy to find an equivalent fraction. So let's just look at some of our examples. Uh, I want you guys all to do 1A on your board. Do 1A on your board. <coughs> Stand up. All right, go ahead and have a seat. I 
Okay, so several of you look here. I'm from four to 20, I had to multiply by five. So from seven to X, I have to divide by five. Is that an easy way to, is that easy? Not necessarily, do I still have to show my work? Yeah, I'm gonna have to show seven divided by five. Five goes in there once, two left. Add the decimal, bring the decimal up. Five goes into 20 four times, so then X equals 1.4. Make sure on your guys' papers that you're saying that X equals, okay? How many of you chose that method? Okay, or I'm gonna do this. So, so four times seven is 28 equals 20 times X. Then I'm gonna divide by 20 divide by 20, so then I take 28 divided by 20, goes in there once, eight left, add my decimal, bring it down, and it goes in there four times. How many of you chose this method? How many of you got it correct? Okay, so does it matter which method you choose? No, you just have to show your work. Let's look at 1B. I know the denominators that goes from 14 to 12. Do I know how I got from 14 to 12? Yes or no? Mm -hmm. So can I do my equivalent fractions? Mm -hmm. No. How do I have to solve it? Cross, Cross product. Say that with me. Cross, Cross product. product. Say it again. Cross product. Say it. Cross I'm looking product. at somebody that's not even talking. Say it again. Cross product. Thank you. All right. So we would do this. 14C equals what's 7 times 12? 84. And then, so can I, do I have to show that it's 7 times 12? No. If you circled it here, you can put your answers there. Does that make sense? And then we're going to finish solving it by dividing by 14. So then I have to do 84 divided by 14. I don't know that answer right now. Um, what should I go with? Let's try 4. No, that's not going to work. Six, which is, there we go, exactly, very good. So C equals six, yes? That is another way, but then you're gonna show me, that's what I was gonna go with next. If you can reduce these, to make it equal, like I'm gonna reduce this by seven over seven to get one half. This is 12, so what would need to be put on top to equal a half? Six. Excellent job, Tyler. One C, I want you to do that one on your board.
of you are, are not quite showing me all of the work that I need to see. Some, some of you are just putting it up there. You have to show me that you're starting here. Then if I'm going from here to here, I'm showing that arrow. If I'm doing cross multiplication, I'm going to do this. We're finding the cross product. You have to show me that. Now, me and my brain, I was just gonna start with cross the cross product, but I was going to reduce it first by two. So that became a one seventeen twenty fifth. Does it really make a difference if I reduce it? Not really, because it's a 17 and I can't any, do, do anything else with that. So we could just leave it as it is, right? Do my cross product. Let's say I put 34T on this side equals, um, what's 6.8 times 50? What was 6.8 times 50, guys? Huh? 30, 340? So that equals 340? Okay, then I, doesn't matter which side I have those on. You can flip flop them, it doesn't matter. Then I divide by 34, divide by 34. And so T equals 10. Some of you have a very good mathematical brain and you're like 6.8 times five equals that. But then you had to show me it would be five divided by 50 divided by five is 10. You had to show that work. Okay, you can't just let it go. Let's go on to example. Any questions on how to do these? You got two different ways you choose. But you're showing work. I cannot express that enough. All right, so the wait time, for example, two, to ride a roller coaster is 20 minutes when 160 people are in line. At this rate, how long, is two, how long is the wait time when 220 people are in line? So it's going to be minutes per person. I would start with my label. Then I'm gonna put in 20 minutes for 160 people. That's my original number there, right? Equals, I wanna know how long is the wait time? Wait time is my minutes. So that is why my W is my thing. Or you could put a T for minutes for time, or you could put a, just an X because we're used to using X. It doesn't matter. Over, then I plug in the 220 people. This is why you start with the label because it'll have to say minutes to minutes, people to people. Does that make sense? You guys understand that? That's why the last lesson I kept saying, Label first, label first, label first, and then you can put in your problem. And then we just solve it. Uh, do I know how to get from 160 to 220? Uh, right now I can't think what I multiply by to get to it. So I would have to do my what? What, what way do I have to do it then? Cross product. cross product. Then once you do the cross product, you divide by 160 to get W by itself just like we've been doing on our bell work, finding, solving one step equation. So let's look at number two. Alicia's class is making care packages for a local shelter. They can make eight care packages with 240 food items. How many care packages can they make with 500 food items? I want you to set this up and complete it. I want you to start with the label. What's gonna go on top, what's gonna go on the bottom? Yes. So go ahead and get started. label. I want to see labels. What's
what's on top, what's on the bottom. Some of you are using abbreviations of letters, that's fine, as long as I can see what your labels are going to be. Some of you might not be quite finished, but let's look up here. Well, Lisa's class is making a care, care packages for the local shelter. They can make eight care packages with 240 food items. So I have care packages for food items. Some of you wrote it out. Some of you put food. Okay. So then I put in eight for with 240. How many care packages can they make with 500 food items? Food items is on the bottom, so my 500 is on the bottom, my X is on top. Let me set it up correctly. Does this say exactly it has to be care packages to food? No. So if I would have done it a different way, I could have put food items for the care packages. But my food items would be 240 on the top. Care packages would be eight on the bottom. You guys with me on that? Equals, I wanna know how many care packages. So my care packages now, my X would be on the bottom and my 500 would be on the top. Does that make sense? It can go both ways as long as food items are all food items. Care packages are all care packages. Does that make sense? Okay. What uh, did anybody get it finished after you did their, your, your multiplication and division? Okay. So we would have done 240 x equals 4,000, right? Mm -hmm. Then I divide by 240. Divide by 240, I'm going to knock off those zeros. So now I just have 400 divided by 24. Do you guys see how that makes it a little bit easier? Then 24 goes into 40 just once, right? Three. So I have now 160. So 24 goes into 160 about, I think, six times. Is it 16 less? So it would be 16 and 16 24 but I want to reduce by 4. Don't leave it without being reduced. So I have 4, 6. So 16 and 4, 6. You, that, um, they left the answer as a fraction because they're doing care packages, but you can keep it as a decimal. Um, which one did you get wrong? Yes, I can, can't I? Two, two thirds, right. Thank you. So you can leave it as a mixed number or as a decimal because you're talking in the types of care packages. All right, let's go ahead and look at the next step of this lesson. Any questions about how to set those up? Make sure your labels stay together. This next part of the lesson is talking about using the constant of proportionality. This is what we took notes on. To find the constant, and that's why we keep writing it in our um, cell work. Constant equals y over x. And then to find the um, equation of it, y equals my constant times my x. There's a reason why on those notes I made you highlight it, circle it, star it, because you're going to be coming back to this a lot. Okay? So it says... You can solve 
problems involving proportional relationships by first finding the constant of proportionality. So Mrs. Hidalgo paid $30 for four students. What's always on top, students or cost? No matter what, it's always cost. So I would need, so I'm gonna set it up, cost per student. And I can write the whole word student, but I'm going to start with a label. Then I'm gonna put in my money. $30 for four students, okay? Find the cost for 20 students. So I have $30 for four students. What's 30 divided by four? You guys don't know that off the top of your head? I don't either. So four goes in there how many times? 7.45. Seven, right? Oops. So it's 7.5, so it'd be $7.50 is my constant. Are you with me on that? So then I put that into this formula. Y equals $7.50 times X. X is my number of students, right? Because it's Y over X. So then it says, find the cost for 20 students. Students is my X, so where do I put my 20 in at? For my X. So it's going to be y equals 7.50 times 20. So then I take $7.50 times 20. Hang out my zero. Two decimal places. So my answer is it'd be $150 for my 20 students. This is what's really important. And this is why you have your notes. So sometimes it's gonna tell you, you have to use your constant of proportionality. But let me erase this for a second. We have $30 for four students, but I wanna make it for 20 students. This one would be easier to do four times five and 30 times five is 150. That would be an easier way to solve it, but sometimes they're going to just give you the formula. Okay? So sometimes you actually have to put it into that formula. So Matthew paid $49.45 for five DVDs at a sale. How much would it cost for 11 DVDs? Oops, I'm going to leave that there because that's important. So I need to start it with, it is cost per what? You guys need to talk to me or you're gonna be doing it on your own. Cost DVD. per, and I'll add it to your homework, decide. DVD. Thank you. Then I set it up, 49, 45 over what? Five, how do I find my constant? Divide. Some of you are not going to get this added to, then some of you will, because I have some of you that are not even trying right now. Five does not go into four, but it goes into 49 how many times? Nine. I need everybody answering. Nine times five is? Nine minus five is? Four. I still need everybody answering. You guys have one more chance, and I'm adding 10 questions to your homework. So you guys decide. I don't care. And I'll give individuals that can have the original assignment. So then I bring down the four. Five goes into 44, how many times? Eight. Eight times five is? Forty. Four left, bring down the five. Five goes into 45? Nine. Okay, so I've got $9.89. My constant is $9.89. Go back to this problem. Why? equals $9.89. Now this is my cost is my Y. The number of DVDs is my X. So it would be Y equals $9.89 times X. You guys understand that. 
then you put in um, y equals $9.89 times 11. And then you do that work. This is a lot of work that is going to be on your paper. And I need to see every bit of it. So you're going to do 3B. Cindy paid $34.60 for four tickets to a movie. How much would it cost for seven tickets? I want you using the constant of proportionality. find the constant of proportionality in order to solve this and put it into an equation. I do not want to see you finding it by cross multiplication. All right, so if it's always cost per item, I'm going to do cost per ticket. I'm just going to make that a T. I started with a label. So then I'm going to do cost is $34.60 for four tickets. To find my constant, it is always Y over X, which is just dividing that. So $34.60 divided by four. Uh, 4 goes into 34 how many times? Eight. Thank you for those of you that are answering. 8 times 4? 13. More of you need to be answering. Bring up my decimal. Bring down the 6. 4 goes into 26? 6. 2 left over. Bring down the 0. 4 goes into 20? Okay. We got our constant now, right? So now I need to say y equals k times x. So y equals $8.65 times X. Stand up if you got that. And you wrote that down on your paper. Excellent. Have a seat. Then I solve. This is my Y. This is my X. So I'm trying to find how much would it cost. So I'm finding my cost equals $8.65 for seven tickets. How many of you wrote that next? Then I write $8.65 times seven. Seven times five is? What? 35. Seven times six? 42. Plus three? 45. Seven times eight? 52. Plus four? 17. What? 17. Two decimal, hold on. Two decimal places, so one, two. You guys, I am holding you up because you were not answering what I was trying to get you to answer. If you're not going to answer and be a part of it, I'm just gonna, you're just going to have to take longer and have more homework. 
You had to have all of these steps. If you don't get it written down from the board, in Canvas are the numbers of problems that you need to do. There are 12 problems. They are all homework. Oh, what happened here?